coach for August 10th, 2019. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that fun-filled music that means it's Saturday. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the School of Podcasting. Dot com and joining me right over there, all the way from uh, somewhere, Nebraska, something Su- sunny Omaha, Nebraska. Sony Omaha, yeah, is the one, the only Jim Cullison from the Average Guy TV. How's it going, Jim? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. I, I keep getting logged out of of, of uh, Google this morning. I've been trying to stay in the chat room, and it keeps popping me out. Have you ever had that problem where just no I, matter how many times you sign in, it keeps keeps dropping you out? I have not. Okay. That, uh, well, maybe it's just maybe it's just me. I, I, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Google. <It's, laughs> if you are if you are joining us live, jump in the chat room. Love to have you. I'll try yeah. and get in there as well. Yeah, we are at uh, askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. And uh, if you are on a phone or a computer, do consider tweeting out that we are live to bring more people over here. And if you have a question, you want to ask it live, simply go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. And uh, speaking of that, we actually had somebody call in one, and so it goes a little. This is John from uh, Sober Speak. Hi, Dave. This is John M. from Sober Speak. I do interviews with Alcoholics Anonymous and Al Anon members, and I had a listener recently contact me and ask me if I could possibly translate some of the episodes or all of the episodes that I have into Spanish. He believes it could have a powerful impact in Latin America. Uh, According to him, at least, the reading skills are not always real strong down there. and Most of what gets transmitted is done orally, uh, but they don't always have a strong foundation in the Alcoholics Anonymous literature. So with that being said, do you have any ideas of how one may translate Uh, podcast recordings into Spanish uh, in a cost-effective way. Appreciate all you do, Dave. Once again, this is John M. from Soberspeak.com. Thank you, sir. And Jim, what what, uh, transcription service were you using? Yeah, we're using otter.ai. Yeah, so I was going to say you could trans, you could get your English transcribed, realized somewhere between probably 80 and 90%. If we're if we're real lucky, yeah. transcribe and speak then go clearly. Yeah. speak really clearly, good audio, yeah. and then go to Google Translate, which will again probably shave off another ten percent accuracy, and then I would hire somebody who speaks Spanish to fix that. Yeah, uh, although it, it takes just as almost like to fix a translation takes a ton of time. It's not. Yeah. It's not like doing it from scratch, and it's not like translating in your head and typing it out. So yeah, that's some some efficiencies there. Yeah. But if you have an hour-long podcast, you're probably still talking about a two-hour edit on a transcript to get it perfect. If yeah. that's what you want, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, well, I know Elsie Escobar just started a podcast about podcasting in Spanish, and without doing any promotion, Apple picked it up and put her on the front page of the Apple Store in Mexico. And I haven't looked at her numbers, but. You know, that's, that's a great thing. I've had people, I, people approach me last year and I'm, I wasn't against the idea. I was like, let's talk about this, but I've, have you ever had anybody approach you and say, or would you, if somebody goes, Hey Jim, I really love home gadget geeks. Uh, I would love to take your content and I'm going to re-record it in Spanish. No, I've never had anybody. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a lot of work, but would you do that? I, you know, I think if I knew, I mean, like, I wouldn't just say, oh, yeah, that's great. I think I'd have to do some due diligence. I would want to hear some of the things they've done. I'd have a, I'd have one of my Spanish speaking friends maybe check some things out just to make sure. Cause you never know, right? You don't want to just give carte blanche. But yeah. Cause um, that's the, the other thing when you think about it, if you don't speak that language, which if you did, you would need this service, they yeah. could be embellishing. You know what I mean? It'd be like all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, yeah come on over. And they're, Meanwhile, they're saying something completely different and you don't know. Home Gadget Geeks, you know, it's an interview show and I'm not sure that would work really no. well uh, to be directly translated. I would say just do your own show. Like, yeah. listen to what I do, add your own stuff and make your own show. Like, I, I wouldn't that I wouldn't care if somebody just copied the format. I copied the format from Leo Laporte. So yeah. it's not like it's rocket science. 
Yeah, I met a guy last year at Podcast Movement, and he just walked up and said, I'm going to be the Dave Jackson of France. And I'm like, awesome. oui, oui. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, go, go to town, buddy. And he, he yeah. just said, I want to let you know, I love your show. I listen to it, but we don't have many French speaking podcasts about podcasting. And he just politely said, and I'm going to rip you off. And I'm like, by all means, I don't speak French. Go, go right ahead. What if he did word for word though? Transcripts. Would you have an issue with that? If he say he put it in English and then he kind of just ripped it off straight into French. Would you have a problem with it? Cause you do have a good format solo single voice you yeah speak clearly it's content it, it gets weird because here's the thing i this is one of the things that i want to talk about um i graduate my competition people go to the school of podcasting and i'm going to say at least 10 percent eventually become podcast consultants hmm. and then and instead of saying oh go to the guy that i went to and using their affiliate link right they open up their own shed and I'm kind of okay with that. That's fine. I get that. What I have had people that have been friends of mine that, well, let, let's, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll go outside of podcasting. Jim, let's say you do a, a show about running cause you like to run and you're like a running expert and somebody comes to you and they, they're like going to be a, a motivational speaker. Like that's their goal. They want to speak on stage, but they're new to podcasting. So you tell them, Oh, well here I do a running podcast and you give them all the ins and outs of a running podcast. And they're like, Oh wow. Thank you so much for being so helpful. And then they turn around and, and open a running podcast. That's where I, I had somebody kind of do that to me. And I'm like, really now you wait, you're, well, you're teaching people how to podcast. And I'm like, but that wasn't your goal when you, I'm like, Oh, okay. Cause had I known that, like I was pulling back all the stops because this is a good friend of mine and, yeah. and, and it's still a good friend of mine. Are they but still just, doing it? Yeah. And it's oh. just one of those where, and I've not voiced that, wow, that kind of sucks that you're doing that. But, and it doesn't. And that's where I need, but here, so let's go back to what am I doing, Jim? Yeah. I'm comparing myself to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, you know, you're right on. You are. And I just yeah. went, wait. And that's where I, I saw the thing where I'm speaking for AWeber and I saw where, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm on AWeber's website. Like, let's not lose track. This person is just starting out. They're just finding out how hard it is to be a podcast coach. And I just went, follow your own stupid advice and quit comparing yourself to others. Uh, I did have a guy contact me. I should have brought up that email. He's a local guy that does a marketing thing. And he goes, we have a service for podcasters. And I go, what is it? And it's like, oh, planning and launching and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, I'd really love to talk to you at Podcast Movement. And I'm like, all right. So it's somebody who just said, hi, I'm your competition like in your area. And, and, and it's like, it's weird because on part of me says there is no competition for listening. There's no, right. You can listen right. to Daniel. You can listen to, you know, the gaggle pod team and all the, ever, you know, but when it comes to like podcast consulting, that's it. I, and it's, that happened yesterday. All this happened in the last two days. And I'm kind mm -hmm. of like, it's, kind of i just messing, like it's messing with your mind i can tell yeah, yeah a little yes. bit yeah yeah no. yeah and i think and it's good I, it's good though like this energy that you have like it mm -hmm. since, because it bothers you it puts a little chip on your shoulder right that's a mm -hmm. that's a, a american phrase right it, it 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 bothers you and you're thinking about it i think it makes you better like i think those things make you oh, yeah. better and so it's it's the spirit of competition it makes you tighten it up it makes you think okay what am i doing that's valuable if you're the only yeah. one out there eventually you're like, you get kind of laxed, you know, you're like, ah, yeah. whatever. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. You're doing it. You know, you, you, you continue to do things to kind of get that edge. And I think competition is good that way. There's a great commercial, uh, that has pictures of like magic Johnson with Larry bird. I forget. It's so it's hilarious. It's a commercial. And I can't remember who it's from. It's probably Nike or Adidas or some shoe company, but they're talking about how, Oh, it's the, the big defensive guy from the Houston Texans. I can't forget his name. He's really, he, he raised a huge amount of money in uh, when they had the hurricane and he's like, Hard. find some competition and, and let that person push you. And I was yeah. like, eh, it's a, but yeah, uh, Randy makes an interesting point. He says, nobody, I can't be replicated. That's your leverage me. So, and that's true. So, and that's why I was just kind of like, all right, just chill out, Dave. It's not a big yeah. deal. That money JJ, changes things a little bit, right? When it's when yeah. we're all just in this together, but yeah. Dan says oh, JJ Watt. JJ Thank Watt. you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and good then guy, Jer by the way. Good, really good J guy. 
He is a really good guy. Jeremy says it's different when someone that does a show in your genre, when it's someone that does something that brings in money, like consulting, I can see where it would feel. It just was something where I did not see that coming. They, yeah. they were yeah. simply going in this direction. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, and I was like, okay, but again, I, there's no rule anywhere that says, you know, all podcasters must go through Dave Jackson. I just need to be so good that nobody else would want to go anyplace else. So John has a question about uh, StreamYard. Does StreamYard, your preferred live video platform, Jim? It is now. Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, now. <laughs> audio and video quality on YouTube is fantastic. In addition to YouTube and Spreaker and other live platforms, you're right. Yeah. Hands down. This is the one that I, uh, I think it was probably, I think I found it. And then Miss Eileen was like, oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. And then her and, um, Ross. Her and Ross. Ross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I, and the more I use it, the more I'm like, you know, and I was paying, I think, $25 for chat something. It wasn't chat wing because that's the one that went out of business, but some sort of chat program. And this is 25. And I was like, okay. And it makes it starting and setting up as the podcast coach on Saturday morning takes maybe two minutes where before it took like, I don't know, five to 10. And it's not that hard. It's just copy, paste, copy, paste. But now I don't have to search for the copy part. It's just like, here's the link to join. Here's the link to, to do this. And I'm like, copy, paste. And it just, it's just smoother. And then plus I can do fun stuff like, you know, this and change the different things. And I can. Hopefully I this part will get better. Like yeah. it's, it's great as is. There's a few, little bit of functionality that I wish they would add to be able to swap sides, to be able to make, yeah. uh, like if I was hosting, I want to make yes. you large. I can't do that. You know, some, some of those. Yeah, some, I can, uh, a few I can do this. I can just go, Hey, Jim who, <laughs> Hey, where'd I go? <laughs> Let me back. Um, and I'm not sure what this is. This, this is, yeah, there's no difference between whatever, which, that, which one are you clicking? The, uh, the very far right one. Cause there's uh, this, you have to have I, a screen share going on. For that ah, one. that's the full screen share. That's that makes the full sense. screen share. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh so, Randy um, says uh, go uh most people are other people, their thoughts are someone else's opinions, their lives a mimicry, their passions a quotation. Oh, I expect Oscar. that from Randy. There you go. Yeah, He's always nice good job. with a quote. You're going to say something. Yeah, I would um on StreamYard. Oh, I would be following Ross right now, Ross Brand. If you're at all yeah. interested in kind of what he's kind of cutting edge right now, he's been doing some live streaming into LinkedIn and has had I was listening to his stats. He's had some really good results live streaming on LinkedIn. So Ross may, if you're, if you're, you know, you want to stay on the cutting edge of this, you might want to be following Ross. He's doing a really good job of testing everything out. And he, he really gets out there to do it. Like you, you can't not find Ross. Once you found Ross, you can't unfind him. He's going to be he's in everywhere. your feeds. He does it. Well, he does a really good job. He's the, he is a master tagger. Like he mm -hmm. tags everything yeah. and so he did one last night where he mentioned me and the and it was about midway through the the show and he made sure he tagged me and it was like mentions in the show this was a really good idea by the way mentions in the show and then he mentioned me well that tagged me on linkedin and i went back over and i was like oh i wonder where he mentions me because like it's still a big deal to get a mention right i, I uh, like yeah. i like hearing my name so went over i listened to the first 20 minutes of it so i could kind of hear where he where i was like what did what did he say you know so that's a that's a really good i mean ross has a really good marketing strategy when it comes to his own brand i know that's kind of a pun but uh so ross but brand no, if you're if you're yeah, if you're, yeah and if you mention anything in your podcast ever and especially if you talk about a product be sure to you know mention them on Twitter or Facebook or whatever so that they know because they'll put that, especially if you say something nice. Oh, they're going to, I mean, Elsie yeah. does that all the time. Somebody will say something like, I just, you know, sent in the thing to lips and I got an answer in less than two minutes and they tweet that out. And then Elsie tweets that, and that puts you in front of, you know, the lips and audience. So, um, Jeremy says we stream audio to our patron supporters using discord. That is something I've not, I've been on the, the, I guess, viewer, listener, participant side. I've not had my own Discord server yet. I don't know that I want one at this point. It's a, uh, it's a whole nother thing, Dave. I mean, it's a whole yeah. nother thing, so be careful. Yeah, Yeah, he says, uh, but they don't have a good video equivalent. That would be a great option for small communities. I have been playing with Mighty Networks. Just I just dipped my toe in the water. And it's, um, do you remember Ning? Yep. It's the, the CEO, I believe, used to work Gina. for Ning. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gina. Yeah. And they started this thing called Mighty Networks. And it's kind of the it should be called Mighty Bell too. Really? Okay. For a while. Yeah. And now it's Mighty Networks. Yeah. And it's it's interesting. It's got some it's a little bit like Patreon where you can set up a plan and then you have different topics. And it's it's one of the the thing is with this, at least for me, I, I think the reason Facebook groups work really good right now is everybody and their brother is on Facebook. Although after they watch the great hack on Netflix, they won't be, if you haven't watched that yet, hoofa. Uh, but that's why Facebook, when, the minute I started a Facebook group for the school of podcasting, I was like, this is the best thing ever. And if I, if I switch this to even something like Slack or mighty networks, you, you've now got to have content so good that people purposely try to do that as opposed to, Oh, they just happen to see something in the Facebook uh, stream. So, but it's pretty cool. It's it's very much like Patreon. They're working on having the ability to live stream right into your Mighty Network, and they're going to have a group chat. Right now, I can chat individually with people in it, but I've just just dipped my toe in it, and it's uh, it's it's interesting. It's just another tool, I guess. So, yeah, they're they're making a real run at that kind of Facebook replacement. Yeah, but but a little like more from a group's perspective. So rather than it being everybody on the planet in one place, it's kind of the bring these groups in and they've got some good. I mean, they're working off of, you know, 10 years of of making mistakes and figuring things out and trying stuff different. They they continue to innovate over there, Mighty. And I get I'm on their mailing list, so I kind of yeah. I kind of keep up with them. Gina, the who who's I think the CEO or, or something like that. Yeah, she's really good at marketing. <laughs> I yeah. get I get really good marketing emails from her. And, well, and so, yeah. I was uh, listening to Marketing Over Coffee with uh, Christopher Penn and John Wall. They've been this is a, a podcast that literally started in a Dunkin' Donuts. Like they would take a portable nice. recorder and two microphones, and you'd hear like every time somebody got a latte or something, it's like Whoosh! in the background. Uh, and they now do it, I think, over Skype because uh, Christopher removed. But they were talking about how Facebook has such a history of here's this cool free thing. And then years later, it's like, oh, if you want to keep using that, you got to pay. And they said, everybody should notice that right now, Facebook is promoting groups. And right now, groups are free. And they're like, just saying, they have a history of look at this cool new thing. And then all of a sudden, they take it away. I don't know that Facebook would do that, man. If no. they if they start, that would be the end of Facebook. We they don't do- advertise in groups, though. This is the thing. Like, they don't advertise. Right. That's uh, That will come for sure. Like, yeah. I, I, I would put, I'd put any amount of money down that we're going to see advertising inside of groups here pretty quick. Yeah. Michael says a replacement for Facebook is MeWe. I do have a MeWe account. I just set one up this oh. week because I heard about it. It's there's no at this point there's I think they have 10 million people or something like that. It's not a ton, but there's nobody in my world, there's nobody over there. Yeah. Um, Isn't that funny? Yeah. 10 million people and you don't know one of them. Yeah, it's like, okay. Well, it was one of those where they're like, do you want us to import your contacts? And I'm like, no, I thought the whole point of this was, you know, but you I'm go over there looking at groups and it's the same. It's it's the same stuff as everything else. Um, John says, receive my Rodecaster Pro. I'm using that today, by the way. And if you're like, Dave, your mic got shorter. I'm using the. I thought Rode, it got a haircut when yeah, I first saw the, it. I was the like, Rode did you pod mic today. And uh, so I, I plugged it in, turned on the told the Rodecaster Pro that I'm using a pod mic. And I, I was surprised at how much I missed the um, the noise gate on the Rodecaster Pro because my air conditioning's on right now as we speak. And yeah, it's really it, quiet. Yeah, I don't hear it. And even even when I don't have a, what you call it, uh, a noise gate, it's easy to do in post or whatever. But uh, he says he, th- I, uh, he thanked them on Twitter with a pick of the box. and th- Yeah, very cool. Again, just keeping that brand. They're a cool brand. They've been very, very nice. I've, I've, uh, I have, I get to play with this today. The uh, SC six L. I'm trying to read backwards. Uh, mobile interview kit, um, which is this thing I'm going to be using at Podcast Movement. Also, last week we talked about the RE50, the Electro Voice. Thank you, eBay, for uh, eighty bucks instead of a hundred and seventy. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, all right. So, wow. I'm in a bit of a gear like you, uh, you're in an acquisition mode, yeah. my friend. Yeah, I'm just I it. like it. Um, I like it a lot. Yeah, Randy says WhatsApp has some momentum yep, too, does. as does Instagram. Does. And does. that's why I say if you watch that thing about Facebook and you realize that Facebook owns, well, obviously Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, you're like, mm. and it's just the the interesting thing about it is they talk about how 
they have that it, something analytics, uh, Cambridge analytics had so many points of understanding the people. And it wasn't about trying to make red people blue or blue people red. It was finding the people that were undecided. And then you would just bombard them with, with stuff to sway them. And it was, it's really kind of, they, they had a couple examples where they've kind of changed like a population. So that's, I don't want to get into politics, but it's a, it's, it's called the great hack on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, uh, check it out. But, uh, Jim, you had, um, you had an update on the, yeah. uh, you had people yeah. giving you kind of spammy emails. Well, don't we all get these emails like, Hey, I, I, I was checking out your site and it's awesome. And I want to do, you know, yeah. would you take sponsored posts or I want to collaborate with you? There's another, there's another hashtag collaboration. Right. <laughs> I want to collaborate with you. By the way, the current rate seems to be about a hundred bucks. I've been getting, I get four of these. It seems like um, a day. It seems like now, um, and they all want to give me a hundred dollars in the through PayPal. Some of that is a scam, by the way. They're gonna, they're gonna do some things with you and get. They're gonna try. Oh well, but we need money from you first. So just <laughs> make sure you're never giving anybody money for these kinds of things. Do not do that, right? But recently, it seems like it's all hundred dollars. Mm. Or we want to collaborate with you. Or the other ones we get are. Hey, I found this link in one of your posts and it's, we have a better link. Yeah. I want you to replace it with, right? Yep. That's uh, thanks to uh, Neil Patel for that. He's a big oh. SEO guru and he teaches that a lot. Okay. And I just, I just saw that video. Yeah, go they're, ahead. Just, they're trying to get traffic and it's fine. Yeah. If you, if you want to do that, if you want to replace it, that, that, that's cool. I don't, I don't want to go back and replace those six. So I said, I got one of those and I said, well, no, I'm not interested in replacing it. But if you write me a post and put that link in it, uh, I'll publish it. Right. And so the guy's like, hey, this is a good idea. So if you go to the average guy.tv right now, uh, you don't have to, but uh, one of the posts I have are nine tips to improve your astrophotography images. And it's kind of nerdy and geeky. It fits my my audience really, really well. That's another one of those kinds of things. I He wrote nine tips, really short. And he, he, he has got like a really uh, in depth, like one of your mega episodes, Dave really mm. in-depth one on this that he just kind of summarized it, put it together for me, right? Oh, it's got one link in it and I got a bio in there and super great content for my site works for him, works for me. There I've also, go. I've also had, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, same kind of deal, uh, how to manage kids screen time. That's a really popular mm -hmm. thing right now. Again, one of those where they, um, they wanted to promote their site a little bit. And, and I said, okay, Send me what you have. And actually, I stripped out all their links. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you one link in your bio. And they're like, okay, that's cool. And so I got this content. Um, and I was really, really clear about this link. I don't call it. I don't, they, I, no money changed hands. So I don't call it a sponsored post. They don't want that, right? And I don't, I don't want to, I don't necessarily want that either, to be honest. Right. So, and then uh, one more. So I've done three of these in three weeks. So it's just not like a one-off. Uh, five best home automation gadgets under a hundred bucks is out there. And, um, and that one was a good one for Twitter because in, if I, if my Amazon affiliate link was working, this is one where I would have swapped my Amazon affiliate link for, I whatever, say. for whatever was in there. Right. Um, I didn't, uh, cause I don't do Amazon anymore. And, um, but I put some links in there and, uh, and then in the bio, uh, this, this, I promoted this guy's company, right? We tweeted about it and sent some things out and I asked my listeners, what would you add to the list? And some of those kinds of things. So it was pretty fun. Again, three out of maybe a hundred, let's say. So it took a little bit of work, but it was, for me, it was kind of a easy way to get some more words on my site and make some relationships with folks who want to publish content, do some friendly link back things uh, uh, for them and, um, and get some conversation going that fit my genre. I'm not putting like, you know, how to make peanut, how to make natural peanut butter on my site. Like that's not, <laughs> that's not what we do or a gadget site, but, um, Dave, it's worked out really well. So it took a little bit of work. I don't let everybody do that. You gotta right. be really, really careful. I mean, some of those kinds of things, but I've done three in three weeks. So that's worked out pretty well. Nice. You never know. Yeah. You know, no. no, you never know. I've been trying to figure out how to turn all that, this wave of of motivation and effort is how, how can it benefit me? And I can use on my site, I can use more content. Like I post my podcast show notes and now I'm doing full transcripts with otter.ai. Mm. So that's kind of helping a little bit, but how can I get some additional things in there? And this seems to help. 
I don't know if it, you're going to be able to tell because, you know, old episodes get more numbers anyway. But I, I've thought about doing the transcript thing and seeing if it boosts downloads or not. I'll be interested to see if you can see that yeah, over time. I don't know if it, uh, I've heard. Yes. It's gotta be Todd would say it's gotta be in real, right? Like it, it can't, you just can't take the raw transcripts cause they're not done very well. Yeah. I mean, unless you speak clearly, like if right. th this kind of transcripts for this kind of show <laughs> are not great, like it's yeah. cause we interrupt each other and we're jumping in and, um, and we're so, we're making up things on the spot, so mid yeah, we don't finish sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, but speaking of questions, uh, first of all, if you want to jump on in, we're at askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. And Michael heard me say the word noise gate and said, "Do we need a noise gate?" And the answer is probably not. Just for giggles, I'm going to go in and turn mine off. So here is with the noise gate, and my air conditioning is on right now. Oh my gosh, it's so noisy. Yeah, it's it's no. uh, it's one of those things that if you listen to this later with your headphones and you smush them real hard in your head, you'll hear a little maybe background. in the background. But no, that's one of those things that no. So uh, it's it just for me, it's it used to work great for when I had Bernie because Bernie was so loud. He would be I would hear him through the door. But a noise gate, I had my DBX going at that point, would cut out really any kind of noise. Because you can set those to be, you have to be careful with a noise gate. Because you can set it like, and what a noise gate is, is let's say right now the air conditioning is at, uh, I'm just going to throw out numbers, 20. But when I talk, I'm at 50. So I can say, hey, anything below 30, because that's my voice is way above 30, and 30 is way above 20. Hey, just squash it. Don't anything that's not at least a, a, a 30 doesn't get into the recording. So that's what it does. Hence the gate. But I've seen some people will go, hey, if I'm a 50, I'm going to set that at 45. And then what happens on it, you will have words that kind of like you begin, you lose the beginning and the end of words because the noise gate doesn't kick in or not. So that's one of those things that, and in some cases I've, I've heard people like if I do, well, I'm going to be recording things, a podcast movement, there's going to be background noise. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to, in my opinion, this is just an opinion. It sounds worse when you apply a noise gate yeah. because it makes it very obvious that the noise is there when people talk. Cause when they, all of a sudden I'm, I'm interviewing, I'm on the floor here with Jim Collison. And, and then as I talk, it's like, you just hear rubber, rubber, rubber in the background. I'm like, no, it, if you leave it in there, well, number one, try to get someplace quiet. But there's still going to be noise. But as I've had some people say, "Wow, I felt like I was there." It it, it yeah. brings ambiance. Yeah. It's it's not bad. It's but I think Bernie the cat is a perfect example of when of uh, a, a gate works in your favor. If you and I were doing this now, when you're talking and the gates open and Bernie meow, yeah, you're still going to hear that. You're still going to get it. <laughs> yeah. But but in the times I'm talking, um, in, in Bernie is meowing, it won't interrupt me in there because your gate will have shut that off. Um, so I think it's I think for most podcasters, a noise gate is completely worthless. Like just don't yeah. don't do it. Don't spend the money. Work on the sound treatment. Work on making sure you're in a quiet space. All those things will give you bigger dividends for your sound rather than than applying effects. I think effects are some of the last things you should do to your audio there's a way more things you can control that are free like practice yeah and like good vocal you know and like um you know some of those kinds of things then then some of the technology i think sometimes we we use technology to try to cover bad technique and i, I just don't think i don't think that works well and speaking of of technique and the fact that i'm using the pod mic today first of all this thing is is a, a pretty decent it's like 100 100 bucks it's not usb and the great thing is if I had somebody in my house, uh, I could unscrew this thing and this would be a great weapon. This thing will take someone. It's a brick. Uh, yeah. It it has, it's supposed to have extra kind of windscreening here, but I did have to play with it and say, Peter wants pizza pronto. I think that's a band roost thing for testing a pop filter. Nice. And it works fine. I'm talking across the mic. So again, I have it kind of pointed at the corner of my mouth. Whereas if I say Peter wants pizza pronto, that's still pretty decent, but yeah, it's, I, I, you can make this thing pop like any microphone. So I just, a little mic technique. I'm like, all right, let's not talk directly into it. And the cool thing is I didn't hear a whole lot of proximity effect. 
So I thought that was another cool thing. So for 95 bucks, they just got to get them out there. I've, I've had a link set up at school of podcasting.com slash pod mic, just P O D M I C. And I believe that goes to B and H and I've had things set up for a long time that B and H is like, let me know when this is available. And I get a thing about every three weeks going, Nope, not there yet. And, uh, so I don't know what the deal is, but, um, that's a good little mic. Sounds good. It, um, you're a little flatter than you normally are. The low end isn't is not much as as, as the 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 yeah. RE three twenty yeah that you have. And but the three twenty has a weird softness to adds a weird softness to your voice. It makes your voice kind of squishy to me. I know I've said that, and people said, mm. what, "What does squishy mean?" <laughs> but it it just it feels fuzzy. This is really clear and kind of bright, not too harsh. Yeah, I sound like I'm. I'm I'm drinking a beer at this point. That's kind of like, doesn't it sound like, <laughs> like bright without harshness <laughs> tones of leather and weeds. Um I so anyways, I I I like this for you. I like the the sound of this mic. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So yeah. the other thing, Jim, you know, we talked last week about the music thing. The music thing is coming, you know, oh my gosh, what could it be? And uh they kind of came out. I forget what website this was on. Um, Inside Radio, Sound Exchange, and Source Audio Forum Alliance to bring music to podcasts, and you can read the whole thing. How's the one, nothing? yeah, and you will learn absolutely nothing. Okay. The I just want somebody to tell me: Can I play ACDC yet? Can I roll a little fog hat into the? And I, I don't know yet. So we'll find out next week. I know. Um, will we? No, like, probably not. I don't well, think, gonna, I think this is what we're going to get next week. Yeah. Like what we saw, I think is what we're going to get next week. Yeah. I don't No pricing. Well, it's, I know it's I'm disappointing. Gonna, I'm going to hunt down Doug. I think that's his name. I think that from podcast music and say, can I play ACDC? Like just let's cut through the, you know, it's because again, it, they always say, oh, it's a huge catalog. And I always want to add of music that I don't want to play. You know, when I can, you know, can I play some uh, Stevie Stiletto, can I play some, you know, uh, Joe Bonamassa? Like, can I play anything yet? And when they say yes, you know, and then I'm not sure what, uh, oh, let's find out. If I go to podcastmusic.com. Maybe Rebecca Black. Maybe that's sure. Oh, the there you go. Um, I'm trying to see. I'm on podcastmusic.com. Uh, U.S. buyout. Need just one song for your podcast? U.S. subscription according to them is I have to put in an email. Uh, all right. I just, I hate, you know, sometimes I just want a price. That's all. Can you just tell me how much it is? I don't want to jump through this on the, while we're doing this live, but that'll be the other thing is like, okay, how much does this cost to play whatever I want to my podcast? So, yeah, no, so, I don't, I, I, this, okay. So when Todd was talking about this, basically told us this two weeks ago or three right. weeks ago, a new media show um, without the details. Right. But it's the exact same thing he said. So, um yeah so i was i we were like okay so now we know the players like okay at least we know who's doing it if they don't release pricing it's worth this is all worthless like i mean eventually it will come what what um what didn't surprise me is they're like yeah 2020 there was lots of references to 2020 in that article like we'll know more in 2020 so i don't think we're actually going to get any news until spring of 2020 I, i i think it'll be It'll be next year, next spring before we actually know it. They're going to drag this thing out forever. I just can't. Now, if they do, if they do pricing on, on, um, and I don't think it's going to be cheap. Like I, no. I if people are hoping for four ninety nine songs for their podcast. No, not, and I think it's going to require a license. I think you're going to pay a fifty dollar license or something like that yeah. every single month to keep this stuff going. Yeah. So Michael says, would you pay a hundred dollars a year? It's not going to be a hundred dollars a year. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Might be a hundred dollars a song. Yeah, but yeah, I can't. Dave, do you know? Do you know the fees for ASCAP and and BMI and some I of those? Have no other? idea. Okay, I, I just know I asked. Um, there's a Christian artist that has a song called everyone has something to say. And I'm like, Oh, that is just so ripe for a podcast thing. And I emailed them and I said, Hey, I would like to play this in my podcast. Can I get your permission? And they wanted 300 bucks for one episode. And I was like, well, no, I was like, I meant like four, like, can I, use, I this is going to be like my outro music. 
And they're like, no, it's yeah, 300 bucks to use it once. And I went, okay, I don't think you guys understand podcasting. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I think this, unless they, I don't know, unless it's a miracle, I think this is a dud. This music yeah. thing is a dud. I just, I can't, I can't imagine they'll make this. It's so tricky to get this kind of licensing because you're talking about both a download and a streaming license put together. Yeah. I just that's going to be the tricky part. I, I just can't imagine that's going to be cheap because if it is cheap, like I said this last week, a million internet radio stations are going to pop up <laughs> a million, at least a million. Yeah. And what kind of reporting is it going to require today? All radio stations are required to do reporting yeah. for all the songs that they do. So that's it. Yeah. Cause you can't, you can't give podcasters just play whatever you want. Pay one fee. Cause radio is going to go, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm paying somebody to, you know, yeah. fill out all these forms and yeah. stuff. So it's, yeah. it's going to, yeah, I'm with you. I think it's going to be, I, I'm, I've just heard this before. We've got a bunch of labels coming on board and I'm like, mm, okay, so, so we shall see. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I, there's a part of me that thinks uh, this might be a, a, a bit of a dud, but uh, you know who are not duds? There's are a awesome, awesome, awesome subscribers. Supporters, yeah. Do we so call them supporters we, or subscribers? I always seem like I'm um, patrons, whatever patrons. you want to call them. Supporters, right. maybe. Awesome. Um, the, the folks who subscribe and, and give you uh, money every month through Patreon. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you can do this. You can join by going to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And we're talking about our awesome $20 that if you, if you pledge, I guess it is, I feel like I'm on PBS, a pledge drive. Uh, if you pledge $20 a month, you get your name mentioned every week. So we're talking about awesome people like Gret, Greg, Gret. Yeah. So making up new words, Greg, I, Gret. It's, it's a cross between Greg and debt. I was trying to figure out where that came from. Remember we talked about this going too long. <laughs> <laughs> DebtShepherd.com, where he teaches financial wellness. Glenn the Geek over at HorseRadioNetwork.com. Josh Rivers at PodcastingExperiments.com. Max Trescott at AviationNewsTalk.com. Shane from Spybrary.com. Carrie Bond. Carrie Bond at uh, KeyWestPerspective.com slash podcast. My buddy Ronsley down in Australia at Amplify Media Group. You can find him at MustAmplify.com. Carl White, you can find him at LifeInTheCarolinasPodcast.com. Kim Craggy over at Toastmasters101.net. And if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, simply go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. So thanks to all those peeps. And uh, Jim says, Jim Harold says, uh, this is going to work for the big companies, too expensive for the indies. Very possible. It's, it's interesting. That brings up, speaking of indies, what, what are your thoughts on the whole, there's a problem with discovery? No, because I I found this and was like, all right, it's it's interesting, but I'm not sure. Again, for this to really have any kind of clout, and that is if you go to Podhunt dot app, and I'll throw this in the chat room. It's uh, it's basically the idea. Like I I saw where two people apparently had voted on Podhunt that my kind of mega episode about interviewing was like, should be like, they got my thumbs up. So it's like a big thumbs up thing. And I went over there and the same thing. I was looking at Podcoin, which is hilarious. Cause I listened to, I listen to Podcoin in the morning in the shower. Cause those, those are things that I'll listen at one X. So I'm listening to like the newsworthy. Uh, and then I'll listen to a little bit of Joe Rogan to see who he's talking about. And it's hilarious because I mean, I've been doing that for months now and I, I think I'm up to, like, I don't know, a 10th of what I need to get a $3 Amazon card. So the whole get paid to podcast or listen to podcasts. I'm like, eh, not, not really, but pod hunt. I look at it and I'm like, mm, okay, it's interesting, but I'm just not sure how, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I know you I think, just, you've just seen it. Yeah. I think it's fun. I think yeah. these things can be fun. Like, and they can help. And, and I think if people want to develop them, it's fine. I don't think we, we, we need to discourage it. Um, I think right. all these things are actually really, really helpful. Um, do, do we, is there a discovery problem? No, no, no problem. Just discovery opportunities that are out there. And so we can continue to, you know, I think everything helps getting discovered. The, the problem is we just have too many podcasts. Like, it's, it's not a discovery. It's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a numbers problem. And when you have, <laughs> I don't know, Daniel, Daniel's in the chat room, Daniel, if I were to ask you what you think 
the number of active podcasts, and we'll describe active podcasts however you want, but uh, folks, maybe in 30 days or 60 days, whatever that means, are currently and actively producing podcasts. You know, I, we know you, you, you have any idea what I think it's around 175,000. Okay. It's still pretty good. Right. Yeah. And, and the beauty of podcasting is that it's a distributed and, and, and disparate network. And so there, it allows for that volume to be out there, but that volume causes confusion, you know, numbers, uh, uh, you know, numbers equal confusion. Whenever you're, the more you have, the more confused you are. So Daniel says it's floating around 40% of the 434 K that's out there. So, um, which is a little bit higher than a hundred and some, but let's just yeah. say, let's just say it's 200. Yeah. Like, let's just say 250 quarter of a million. It's a lot. It's a lot for people to sift through. So no one podcaster, especially if you don't have, I mean, all the popular podcasts have huge networks behind them, driving numbers, NPR, podcast one, Joe Rogan, Mark Marin. I mean, they all have, if we think of those, anything from NPR. They all have huge marketing machines behind them. And so it's no secret. My Gallup podcasts do better than my, my, than home gadget geeks. Cause I have a marketing team behind them, right? Yeah. It helps. I have a product. Yeah. Daniel says he defines active as a published one episode in the last 90 days, which does also include new podcasts with only one episode. Yeah. So that makes sense. So, um, yeah. Cause I, there's a lot of new ones, right? Um, yeah. You know, so I, I do think we're in the midst of a, um, I, you know, at some point we're going to kind of run out of newbies. Like everybody who wants to try a podcast is going to try one and then they'll be like, uh, and I think we'll see those active weekly numbers, you know, today, like new podcasts started. I think we'll start to see those numbers kind of just pull back a little bit. I think we're in this exciting, everybody's doing an anchor age of, of podcasting, but Dave, it, it, it's not sustainable. Like I, that, that number is not sustainable. And I think eventually people are going to be like, Oh my God, I'm going to do this. And I get three listeners. I'm out. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. Cause I, I, I forget what group I was in and they were talking about, you know, they, they, they had done their big launch, you know, they launched with three episodes and blah, blah, blah. And they're kind of like, but I'm still getting like, it's been whatever, four months now and I'm getting like 30 to 50 downloads an episode. And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You are. Uh-huh. Way to go. Good job. You know, um, I love banks is there's a problem with discovery for people that want to sell solutions to the discovery <laughs> problem. And that there is you so, go. There is you so go. True. Uh, and Daniel is, is crunching away at numbers as we speak. So by the way, I think Daniel has probably become the foremost expert yeah. in real time data with what's going on. He's, spent this downtime he's been been doing other things on really putting together a machine kind of a data machine of getting stats on what's real and what's not and so daniel nice job on that I, i've seen yeah. that pop up in other circles as well which is super cool yeah he says 248,000 podcasts have four more episodes with at least one published in the last 90 days which is still minuscule compared to the amount of content going on YouTube. You know, if you think about oh, it, people are starting YouTube channels every day. Sure. Yeah. 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 So Pod podcasting, when we think about the numbers on YouTube, like when podcasters say, should I be on YouTube? I'm like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, you should be. It's another space though. There's so much noise out there that you got to stand out. If you're going to, if you're going to hope to get any numbers, you're not going to put something on there and see it instantly go viral. Although I think they're probably, hmm, you could debate. I could debate this. I'm making this number up. I think there's probably more eyeballs on YouTube than all of podcasting. Oh yeah. I would, I would. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't you think so? Yeah. yeah just, I, I think just, so yeah. Um, Dan says there, there are interview shows, solo shows, highly produced shows, scripted shows, and all of that is beyond the topic. So, but topic is most discovery platforms try to focus on. Okay. Um, you know what? I just realized it's 1115. I buried the lead today. Oh, uh, swing it up. Well, there's two things I want to mention. Number one, I love James Cridlin because there was a big thing like top, you know, big shot, smarty pants in, in podcasting. And the number one guy was the guy from iHeartRadio, and James Cridlin just ever so politely mentioned that the, whatever the website was inside radio.com, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And oh, by the way, they're owned by iHeart. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, not just, just uh, politely yeah. threw that uh. in there. Because I was like, wait, what? How did iHeart Radio is on a rampage with self-promotion at the moment. I mean, they have 
they have self ordained themselves number one at everything in the podcasting space. You know, they, in fact, sometimes I kind of wonder if the article is going to come out and say, there's no other, you know, we've been podcasting. We're the only podcast. Yeah, we are the only podcasters. <laughs> Nobody else is actually doing it. It's just us. We invented it. It's us. Yeah. But the, the big story I think this week and people have been wondering, like Dave keeps talking about how he's watching videos on SEO. Well, this is why. Uh, Google is has now said that they're going to start putting episode like podcast episodes in search results. That's the good news. The bad news is this is one other thing for us to obsess over because I'm sure some of them will show up and some of them will not. But um, yeah, I just I've been watching on Skillshare. Uh, there's a guy who runs SEO Moz as an SEO course, and then boy, I tell you what. If you ever want, it's so, it's almost like the office. There's one guy that has a thing on Google analytics. Cause that's another program that I know this much about. I know enough to be dangerous, but I really should know more about this. Cause you can learn some really cool stuff there. And I'm, I'm telling you, this guy just looks dead into the camera today. We're going to talk setting up a, a group on Google analytics. And he's, he's not like completely monotone where he just talks to one, but man, I, w- I just expected him to go, and now I'm going to take my red stapler and go home. I just was like, oh, I could not believe it. So there, there is something. It goes back to my interview with Kristen Meinsner um, is the fact that she said, you know, we all love facts, but if we just love facts, we'd all be reading the encyclopedia. And I was like, man, that's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, they want to know, are we going to do a live podcast recording at Podcast Movement? No. I, d- I don't believe I don't think so. so. No, I think so. We're going to do live talking yeah. to people from podcast movement. So if you're at podcast movement and you want to, you want to come out, we've talk, been talking about this over the last couple of weeks. And I just really, in the, some of the advice we gave last week about it, in most cases, I just really encourage people when you're at a conference, just be at the conference, podcasting, yeah. preparing for it, getting ready for it, doing it. And those kinds of things. I, that's I, if they asked and and we didn't have a ton of work to do, I'd absolutely get up there, Dave, and do oh, yeah. do a It'd podcast. Fun. Not a big deal. It's not my priority. My priority is hanging out with you and hanging out with everybody else who is there. I'm looking forward to meeting it. Ross, who I mentioned earlier, I haven't met Ross ever personally, so I'm looking nah. forward to meeting him and many of you who are there. I just I'm gonna spend that time live with people. The one thing I'm looking for there, besides catching up with people is I'm going to be talking to as many people as I can, especially if they make money with their podcast, yeah. because yeah. I've been working on this book and I looked at the contract. They want 50,000 words and I'm at about 19 and I still have a lot to go, but I'm like, I'm going to need some content, you know, cause I'm so used to get to the point. And yeah. in the book world, they kind of like, not that they don't want me to get to the point, but I apparently I need more points to get to. So I was like, okay. So if I, like I talked to, um, and I went back to some of the people that were in the earlier one, like Emily Morse does uh, sex with Emily. And I'm just, what I'm looking for is what percentage of your business is ads. What percentage is this? What percentage like, cause I'm noticing that most people that do this full time have multiple streams of income. And so I'm going to be walking around going, do you make any money with your podcast? Uh, to people. And if they do, I'm firing up whatever I got because it's not going to be for a podcast. It's for me to take notes on. Um, you know, you know, what'd be interesting in that um, section, Dave, when you think about making money is to break that down into categories. So yep. have, have, see if you can find the commonalities in the categories of that. So in other words, affiliate marketing, like how much, what are you doing and how are you driving uh, right. those, your own products? Like, how are you doing uh, it that way? advertising and and you could even break the advertising down into in various categories yep. where we're talking print advertising and or those what, what's going on your website what's going in you could talk about host advertising you you yeah. laid that list out for me the other day when we yeah. a couple couple weeks ago right are is that are yeah, you thinking about that because it starts off with it's like i start off saying this is not the the book says this is not how to get rich quick and if that's your goal please go to the local track and bet on some horses you'll have better luck and then, then there's uh, a little bit on you have to deliver value. You have, you cannot expect to get money from your audience if you do not deliver value. But it's not. I have to be very careful because I don't want it to be a book about how to podcast. It's a book about you have a podcast. Here's how you make money with it. And then it's like here are here are the whatever six ways. You know, uh, sell your own stuff, sell other people's stuff, advertising, um, dynamic ads. I forget what the other ones are. Blah, blah. And then I'd say, okay, now that we've talked about those. Let's go into each of these. So like there's a whole thing on 
uh, live events. And I'm actually going to talk to Chris uh, Kremitzos while I'm yeah. there. And I'm like, like yeah. what are some tips for people? And I think I've done that once before. I think he was on the school of podcasting. And that's really what I'm doing with a lot of the stuff is I'm going back and listening to old interviews I did of people. And I'm just, it's really just consolidating a lot of the information I have into uh, one spot. So I'm, I'm happy that I have a uh, school of podcasting.com slash Glenn, the geek, because that's a page I made that has all of Glenn's appearances on my show. <laughs> Cause he's going to have, he should have his own chapter. It's uh, so it should be fun, but yeah, uh, he, well, he should be the, I mean, he's the poster child for this he is. Of, yeah. of he's doing it well. And I mean, I mean, think what Leo, we mentioned him earlier. Think about yeah. Leo Laporte has done uh, from a network uh, basically starting with just a handful of folks doing it that way. Uh, it will be, you know, I don't know because here's the difference. Uh, uh, he's asking in the chat room, when will the update to more podcast money be available for early subscribers and purchasers? Honestly, don't know. I'm still writing it at this point. And the thing that's different this time is I'm working with a publisher. So, and why am I doing that? Cause I've never done that. And I was just like, it, it I kind of weighed it. And what it's going to look like is I'm going to get paid more up front, which is cool. And then probably make less money as time goes on. Cause that relies on them paying me and that, you know, and where, when I did it myself, I paid a bunch of money up front right. for editors and book uh, design and things like that. And then over the last uh, seven years, you know, every month I make, you know, something ridiculous, like 20, 30, you know, when it first came out, I was making more money, but you know, every now it's like, if I'm lucky if I sell two copies a month, um, which ends up to like eight bucks or something like that. But I've now made in seven years, I've made the same amount of money that I'm going to get paid up front. So it's just a different, that's how I went. You know what? Let's just do the, that way. I actually think you'll get a better product this time. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, no, I'm not saying self-publishing right. you did bad, but you're now you're letting the pros do their job. Yeah. They're, they're good at this and they're incented to do a good job on it because they've paid you all this money up front they're going to want to recoup that money on the backside. Right. And yeah. so they're incented in the right way. I, I do think this is one of those where like, I know self-publishing is glamorous and it's cheap and all those other yeah. kinds of things. And, and you get to control everything, but you, man, a good publisher and some marketing. Wow. Yeah. You could, you could do yeah. some things. Yeah. And so they're saying it takes longer to get the final deliverable published and available. And yeah, it does. So I, that's why I say I, I don't know. I'm just working on it at this point. And the other thing that, and, and this is what they're saying, it's a better product be doing an editor. Now I had an, I had people go through and look for like typos and things like that. Yeah. I had, I had no, well, I, I, the, my oh, first yeah. editor, my first editor, I handed him this and he goes, Hey, this is great. He goes, uh, which one of these did you want to turn into a book? And I go, well, no, it's, you know, that's it. That's the book. And he goes, you have like four books here. Cause I had a whole bunch about planning your podcast, uh, how to bo whole, you know, and how to start one. He goes, you have like four books here. He goes, you have starting planning, growing, and you have monetizing. He goes, which one of these should be a book? And I was like, Oh, all right, let's go with the money thing. That seems to be what people are interested in. And so that's how it came out. So that was the only kind of content information that I got out of that. The rest was just checking for, you know, grammar and things of that nature. So yeah. this should be well, interesting. This it, way. it will be interesting to see how this does, how, how this does for you. Yeah. The other, the other thing I'll encourage you to do on the backside of this, because you're not worried necessarily about, I mean, you are, but you made most of your money up front, right. Is ride this thing and their promotion. Like they're going to oh, promote yeah. it, ride that thing. Like that's yeah. how you monetize on the backside for you is take advantage of all the advertising or whatever they're doing. And, and make sure you're following that thing for them. I think you do that well. Somebody like Emily, who did really, really well with her book, and some of those seats, they'll, they'll ask for another one. They'll be like, hey, this was a great experience. Yeah. Let's do this again. Well, the, the only I thing I, oh, go, go ahead. The only thing I really negotiated on is I wanted to maintain rights to the audio. I, want, I don't want to split audio rights. Are you going to read it? So I'm, yeah. So I, oh, the one nice. thing that people said that, like, hey, Dave, I like your book. You know, this is kind of made for podcaster. Where's the audio version? And I was like, oh, cause that's, that's no fun. I've, I read my first book. I had a, I had a book for musicians and it's, it's weird because you kind of wrote it. It's your words more or less. But again, we don't write like we talk and we don't yeah. talk like we write. And I even try to write like I talk. Um, yeah, it's very much like you're just sitting across the, uh, the table from me, but reading an audio book, Without sounding it like you're reading an audio book is uh, is not a lot of fun. Not so, my skill. 
not my skill. Voiceover is a special yeah. skill. And I think some, most of us podcasters think we're good at voiceover and we're not, we're good at podcasting. We're good at talking yeah. some of those, but voiceover stuff and, and reading mm, that takes a special talent and you could be good at it, but if you're not, I'd hire it. I wouldn't do it. That's not, I wouldn't, I can't sit down and read for hours because you're going to literally read for hours. Oh yeah. It takes days. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. And, and the only reason I'll probably do my own is for me, at least I think a book read by the author, even if it's a professional voiceover person, it just has a different ring. And part of it is like when I listen to, um, what was I doing? I think it was a book by Sammy Hagar. And even though it was a professional voiceover guy, I still kind of heard it in the voice of Sammy Hagar in my head. <laughs> um, and actually they found a guy that kind of sounded like Sammy Hagar. But, uh, so we'll, well, that might be one of those things I jump off when I get to, I just know I definitely want an audio version just because again, oh, for sure. I've never done that. And you know, what so about we making that available? Like, are you going to make an audio version that you're selling as a separate book? I thought about putting it on audible. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that'd be fun. Daniel says, am I going to go off script like Gary V? <laughs> I might, that, that kind of ruins the whisper sync. If you've never listened to, um, it's not, not jab, jab, right hook. It's the other book that he did. Um, oh, it's going to drive me nuts, but it was awesome. His audio book was, he'd be talking and he's like, all right, hold on a second. Cause a whole lot's changed since I wrote this book and he would just go off and this is stupid. And you got to do this now. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's get back to the book. Crush it. Yes. Thank you, Daniel. Um, same thing. If you've never listened to Kevin Hart's uh, book, you can't make this stuff up. Oh, it's hilarious. Cause he's, he's, he's just, he's very Kevin Hart in that to uh to say the least but uh jim when are you getting in on monday or when are you getting in on for podcast no tuesday i think is my arrival tuesday. tuesday morning so i'll be there i think i'll be there by noon i think that's a good question like i just realized the other day like i've packed my schedule all the way through monday uh and i was like hey it's somebody i need to pack and kind of get ready for this thing um yeah and so yeah it looks like i am scheduled to be in right at noon so i should be a at the hotel grounds by, uh, let's say one o'clock. Yeah. I get, I get in Monday morning and then I'll probably hang out at the hotel and then we're recording a, an episode of the feed Monday night with, nice. uh, with the Robs and Elsie and myself. So that'll be fun. Probably Crystal will be in there too. So that'll be fun. You guys setting but up a separate studio or I have no idea. There's so, I, and I've been re I've been invited to so many after parties yeah. that I just keep replying to, but yet I don't know where they are or when they are. I'm hoping I'm going to get some sort of, uh, you know, I'm just going to latch on to you and follow email. you. Yeah, that's it. And I'm just like, okay, I know Tuesday I've got something planned and, you know, and the cool thing is we have eight people at the Libsyn booth. So nice. like, I know Ed, Ed Ryan wants to uh, have a quick 15 minute, uh, meeting with me just to talk about podcast business journal. And I'm like, okay, I think I can sneak away for 15 minutes. Cause in theory, there's going to be seven other people, but the reason we're bringing eight is because there's going to be people like me that, sneak away a little bit and then Elsie's going to sneak away because she's got to do the social thing and the Robs are going to be talking to the big shot smarty pants people. So yeah, yeah. this should be fun. But uh, what is coming up on uh, the average guy TV? Yeah. Aaron Lawrence, a uh, special guest. She's been on a couple of times. She just uh, built her own custom conversion van. So they bought one of these like utility vans and then outfitted it with sink and fridge and inverters and solar power and all kinds of cool stuff. So, I guess if you do hashtag van life, that's a real popular hashtag on Instagram. And a lot of people are out doing this with these vans. So the average guy TV. And this week on the school of podcasting, I'm calling it podcast, either soup or stew. I haven't figured out yet. It's a bunch of ideas that I've had in my Evernote, but they're not big enough to be their own episode. So it's going to be like, you know, the lightning round. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. And it's just going to stew them all together. Uh, and then I've got an interview in the can that I'm going to use to be in place. So when I come back from podcast movement, sounding like Barry White, I'll have something, but uh, thank you chat room. Stick around for some post show. <laughs>